Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of ClipX Pro Q&A with Stray. Before we get started, I wanted to mention that tomorrow, May 22nd, Ask Audio is going to be hosting a ClipX Pro Masterclass, and I'd love to see you there. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, so now on to today's question. It comes from Rich via email, and the question is, I have Live 10 Suite, M4L, and Push 2. Is there any point in buying ClipX Pro? Unfortunately, I can't answer that question because it's entirely dependent on what your needs are. I can say for sure that there are things that ClipX Pro can do that would benefit you. Whether or not you need it, though, that's a different question. So the best that I can do is kind of show you some examples of what you can do with ClipX Pro in your current tools, and then you can make up your own mind in terms of whether or not you need it. So let's jump in. First, let's take a look at the Max for Live integration. ClipX Pro has a very simple interface that allows you to trigger action lists from Max for Live devices. All right, and this device provides an example of that. This device is available in uh, the Max for Live integration lesson. And this device is very simple. Let me open it up and show it to you. This is the operative part of the device, this JS object here. And you can use this in your own devices. And all you do is simply pass it the action list that you want to trigger. All right, so very simple. And it'll work with any Max for Live features. So, you know, things like buttons, sliders, drop down menus, LFOs, what have you. All right, in this device, uh, we have a text box where you can enter action lists and then a trigger button. So right now, Metro is in here, so this is gonna trigger the Metro action. Okay, and I can add other actions here. So let's do mute, and now it'll trigger both those actions. All right, so this is a very simple device. It's just meant for demonstration and to give you that uh, JS object that you can use in other devices. A more complicated example is available on the master track uh, and this device is available in the Push 2 integration lesson. And what this does is add a ClipX Pro mode to Push 2. All right, so to show you what I mean by that, uh, first of all, Push's matrix, the 64 pads here, have two main modes of operation. Note, where you can play and sequence instruments, and then Session, where you can launch clips and scenes. We add a third mode, which you can access by holding down Shift and pressing Session. And this gives you the ability to trigger ClipX Pro actions from the 64 pads. Right now, I just have uh, some actions set up on the bottom pads, and these will control the crossfader. All right. To assign actions, you just go to the device, uh, hit Edit Settings, and you'll have a matrix editor here. All right. You simply select the pad you want to edit, then enter the action list. In this case, we'll do Metro. And then the LED color, uh, we'll do Pale Green, and you can see... I'm off and running. All right, so very simple to use. I wanted to show you this first because we're gonna be using it in some of the uh, other examples. Next, let's take a look at managing Push 2 scale settings. In case you're not aware, the last scale settings that you used will be stored within the set. And that's useful, but what if you have a set where different clips are using different scale settings? Push 2 doesn't currently manage that. All right, let me give you an example of what I mean. Right now we're in C major, in key, and let me record a clip here. Okay, now I'll switch down to the next scene and we'll change the scale settings. We'll go to uh, D flat minor, chromatic, and I'll record a clip there. Okay, so what would be nice is that if we went to, the, to play the first clip again, that it would switch to the scale settings we used. All right, but it doesn't. As you can see, we're still in uh, D flat minor, chromatic. All right, so with ClipX Pro, we can solve that problem and another problem, which is kind of a pet peeve of mine, and that is that when you create clips with Push 2, it doesn't name the clips for you. So these clips just have blank names. All right, so let's, uh, first of all, revert back to the default settings here. And I'm going to uh, delete these clips. So we'll delete this one and then this one. All right, and now let's see how we could fix this with ClipX Pro. All right, so I'm going to go to our Max Live device here. And the action we want is going to rename the clip. The clip we want to operate on is a selected clip. And we're going to use this action named, whoops, named names. All right. And what this will do is it'll actually turn the clip into an X clip. And the name of the X clip will be based on the name of the track and scene that the clip is on. All right. And the action we want it to perform is push, whoops, push SCL, which is short for push scale. And that'll store pushes scale settings. All right. Now, in order to store the settings, we need to play the clip. So we'll put in play cell, which means play the selected clip, and then we'll select a color for that. All right, and now let's try that same thing again. All right, so again, my scale settings are C major and key, and we'll go ahead and record a clip. Okay, and then I'll switch to my clip X mode and store those settings. Okay, and now we'll go down to the next clip. We'll change the settings back to 
uh, D flat minor chromatic. And we'll go ahead and record a clip. Okay, and again, back to Clipax Pro Mode to store those settings. All right, and now, when I switch back to that first clip, you'll see the scale settings uh, come back to how I needed them to be. And then in the second clip, again, so they switch automatically for me, which is quite handy. Here's some examples of some actions you can use in live performance situations uh, that make things a little bit easier. All right, as you probably already know, pushes and encoders can do lots of different things. I um, mean, that's great, but in a live situation, that may not be ideal because really you want to be able to know at all times what your encoders are assigned to, and you want to be able to assign them to what you need them to be assigned to without having to press a bunch of buttons. So this control track uh, handles that for you. All right, so in, in this first uh, clip here, it's going to select clip mode, all right, and then select the first clip on the drums track, this here. So we'll be controlling that clip. And then here... Uh, we'll be switching to device mode, and we'll be switching to controlling the third device on the blips track, this track here. All right, this does the same thing for a device on the drums track, and then here we select pushes mix mode. So just by launching scenes, we're essentially assigning the encoders to what we need them to control for that given scene. All right, and then over here on this messages track, I just have some actions that will show a message in pushes display. And in this case, they're just being used to show me the names of the various sections of the song that I'm in. All right, so let's... Uh, look at a quick example of this. So if I launch my intro scene, it's gonna show me I'm in the intro, it's gonna to switch to clip mode, and I'm gonna be controlling uh, the clip that I need to control. All right, if I launch this guy here, now I'll switch to device mode, I'll be controlling the compressor um, on the drums track. Here, I'm in the breakdown, controlling simple delay on the blips track, and then if I launch this scene, now I'm in the hook and I'm in mix mode. So very simple and yet very useful in a live context. The examples we've seen so far are specific to Push and Push 2. Now we'll look at some examples that'll work with virtually any control surface script and are meant to extend the functionality of control surface scripts. All right, so again, we're gonna use our Max for Live device here. I'm gonna switch into ClipX Pro mode. And you can see I've got a bunch of actions set up here. Let's start with these, uh, this first row up here. All right, so what these will do is randomly launch clips on the eight tracks that Push is currently controlling. So, for example, right now, this button will randomly launch clips on track one. All right, if I move the border over a little bit, now it's going to randomly launch clips on track three. Okay, so in other words, it stays in sync with the eight tracks that Push 2 is currently controlling. All right, let me move back here, and we'll get clips launched on all these tracks. All right, now the next row... What these will do is uh, control the transposition of the clips that are playing across the eight tracks. All right, and these are a little more complicated uh, because they'll also show clip view and then select the clip uh, that's playing. All right, so to show you that, if I was to use these, to select the, the clip name Caveman, uh, this one, select the clip name uh, Timp and uh, Snare Riff, all right, and Journey 2.1, I'm sorry, Journey 2.1, all right. And then uh, this row of actions controls the uh, ring or the grid selector here. So I can jump around to different areas of my set like this. Okay. And then the last row uh, is kind of handy. Uh, this allows you to link uh, this ring or the grid selector to whatever is selected. I'm sorry, to whatever track and scene is selected in session view. All right. So let me turn this on. And then we'll switch to session view so you can see what's going on. I'm sorry. We'll switch to session mode so you can see what's going on here. All right, so no matter where I select, I'm going to be focused on that area with the ring selector so I can launch clips in that area. All right, so it's very handy, uh, primarily in the studio. And finally, here's an example of script linking. This allows you to link up to six control surface scripts together to form a larger control surface. In this case, I'm just linking the launch pad with push two. And now if I move from either one, they're going to stay locked together. All right. So I hope that gave you some ideas on what you can do with Clipax Pro in conjunction with Push 2 and Max for Live. Please keep the questions coming, and I'll see you in the next episode.